Welcome, welcome. Morning, Woolworth Show here on the Woolworth Sports Network. Thank you for tuning in to everybody. Uh, comments are already coming in. John Hughes says, I'm up early for this one, boys. LFG, Michigan Sports is on the rise. And that's the comment I made last segment. The, the stage you got to see Michigan play on and the Lions play on. Like, we are used to Michigan being, you know, one of the better teams in the country. But for Michigan in general, it was a great weekend. Despite the Lions losing, it was still a huge, huge stage. You had the all the media talking about the refs, the Lions, them getting screwed. And then you had Michigan beat Alabama, yeah. beat Nick Saban, which, you know, that's a whole nother storyline within itself. Big week end for Michigan. Now, Matt Broder's joining us. It's time to get into it. We'll, we'll get into the Lions. We'll get into the Michi- we'll get into Michigan because you're a Michigan man. We'll, oh, we'll yeah. ask you about both. Uh, number one, start with the Lions. Big game over the weekend. Uh, I thought, despite it not being a high-scoring game like many of us thought, um, you know, we, we I picked 33-30. Many of us thought it'd be a higher-scoring game. It was... It was a dogfight all throughout. Yes. Uh, Just your thoughts on how the game transpired, maybe some of the decision-making from Dan. I know he got some heat for it. I I don't think he deserves a lot of it, but just your thoughts on how it ended as well. Yeah. Just the game. So the the game in general, it was an entertaining game. It was was the opposite of what I expected. I thought there was going to be a shootout. I thought it was going to be a clean offensive battle, but... But no, the defenses were what what were impressive, and specifically the Lions defense. And I think a game should give Lions fans hope uh, seeing that defense play like this before getting C.D. Deuce back, James Houston, Ali McNeil. We got people coming back, mm-hmm. and they just held the Dallas Cowboys, who average almost 40 points at home, to 20 points. So there is a lot to be optimistic of. I did not think it was one of their best games on offense. I thought the offensive line struggled. I thought Jared Goff struggled. Uh, I thought there were a lot of things. I thought Ben Johnson struggled for the first 50 eight minutes of the game but that offense came together at what with 141 left and, and managed to win win the game um they, they did what they needed to do to drive down the field and win the game and obviously we know uh it didn't turn out too well in the lions favor uh but there were a lot of those intangibles those overcoming adversity type things that we can take away from this game i, I wouldn't want to be a team playing the lions moving forward they, they're they're going to be so focused and ready to go on a playoff run here uh it it sucks it hurts right now but there's a lot that this fan base can be excited about broder as disappointing as that loss was and i know a lot of us especially us michigan fans needed that michigan win to kind of save the weekend or if they would have lost it would have just like dove us all into a deep depression but anywho about the uh there are still some positive things to take away from the lions game and that and that is of course the number one thing to me is this lions defense do you think that they've turned the corner a little bit and that this is a lions defense that can go up against some of the big boys in the playoffs and have a great performance and can maybe lead them to a super bowl because going on the road to dallas Dallas and holding them holding Dallas to their worst offensive performance by far of the year at home is damn impressive yeah I I don't know if I've turned the corner yet I still have have some concerns but I'm optimistic because we've seen them be able to do it I I, right. I think it's a struggle going up against a, a better offensive line than Dallas is they were a little beat up uh you know I'm, I'm picturing the 49ers the Eagles the Ravens I, I don't know yet but to see them play inspired football like this to see Aaron Glenn sort of keep the Dallas offense off balance all game. There were a lot of good things to take away from that. Uh, There's still some concerns about covering a number one wide receiver. Um, Although the Lions made Dallas one dimensional and really shut down that run game. Shut down Dallas on first down. That was Mm -hmm. huge. CeeDee Lamb. I mean, have a day. Have a day. A lot of credit goes to CeeDee Lamb, but also we really, there was no answer. He was all over the place. So what are we going to do when those happen? Of course, some of these new pieces should help. Um, but I'm not there to say this is a, a Super Bowl champion defense, but they can play well, and, and all you need to do is go on a run in the playoffs. So I'm optimistic from seeing that. I don't know if I'm fully confident yet. Yeah, and those who are just joining, we're joined by our, our Detroit Lions beat writer, Matt Broder, for Woolworth Sports. And, and I know one topic that is, is probably going to be a hot topic all week is Aiden Hodgson uh, just completely single-handedly dominated the game. And I and I even, we were texting me and Sam Flannel in our group chat, and I'm saying, give credit to Aiden. He, he completely, he wrecked that game. We got to uh, give him credit. With, he, yeah. We I mean, were calling for sacks, and mm-hmm. okay, he got three. Yeah, it, it seemed like it was, a, it was a long time coming, and all that anger just went into the Dallas. And he got three sacks. He completely wrecked the game. Uh how much could that be a confidence booster? And, and, and when you mentioned, when Dan Campbell mentioned it's a blessing, I know people when they heard that were like, eh, I don't know about that one. But to be fair, 
I see I see what he's trying to say because if that game was in the playoffs, it would be a lot different. Yes. I, I think for this whole narrative about Detroit and the brand new Lions and everyone's excited and, and people calling it the new America's team, not that they not that I want that ever to happen, the refs to miss a call. Nobody wants that. But it was kind of a bringing the Lions back down to earth moment where it's like, hey man, like this is going to happen to you. You know, unfortunately, it happened to a lot of NFL teams. Dan mentioned he was from the Saints. The Saints got screwed a ton of times too. So if anything, if you're going to have a game end like that, you'd rather it be in the regular season where, again, it is frustrating because you'd like them to win that football game because then next time you face them, they'll come to Ford Field. Right. But if they go back to Dallas, at least it'll be meaningful football and guys are going to be pissed off, including Aiden Hutchinson, who yes. completely wrecked that game. Yes, and I think Aiden playing that well has a lot to do with why the defense was so successful holding them to 20 points. But but you're right. There's, there's still football left to play. It's, it's frustrating because the number two seed was alive. The number one seed was alive. And actually, the number two seed is still alive. But that path to get it, um, was a lot easier and and just knowing that they they did win it like they, they did not do anything wrong on that last play in fact that play is executed to absolute perfection it's perfect you couldn't you couldn't do it any better that gives me that gives me so much confidence in this team like they're even more put together than i expected like they down to every little detail including penny sewell being the other offensive lineman to go over with taylor decker because their numbers are similar you're trying to deceive the dallas defense I, I'm blown away at how they executed that. Even Dan Campbell before the game meeting with the referee, which which they do, um, but him talking about this play, they they were ready for this moment. This team was ready. Down by uh, uh, how much were they? Down by seven? Down by six? Mm -hmm. No, down by eight. It was thirteen twenty. Yeah, down seven, by seven. Yeah. Um, yep. With one forty one to go, they drove right down. Yep. And part of that, I, I don't know what Dallas was doing on defense that last drive. They decided to pump the brakes. Um, and that let Jared Goff have the time to to pick them apart. But they went down and they did what they needed to do. Get, that gives me so much confidence. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm, I'm kind of going to piggyback off of that a little bit. Because obviously, the, Lion, the Lions, they played a damn good game. You can argue that they got screwed. I know we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Are you... Does the motivation that it will give this Lions team going into the playoffs, do you think that will at least offset the seeding disadvantage that they will probably get from them losing this game? I do. I do. Uh, I, I truly believe that. I'm trying to separate myself from the the – the, the, the hype, the excitement, the, the everything about that emotional roller coaster. But I, I do, and I think especially if it turns out where Dallas is the second seed, I believe in it that much more. Like If the Lions can get to round two, which it's no guarantee, they, it's looking like they might get the Rams, and th there are a few different scenarios, but if they can get to round two, having to go indoors to start and not outdoors to Philadelphia, um, that's massive. And then the fact that it's Dallas, you, it sucks having to go back there, but if you're going to go back there with a bad taste in your mouth, it's it's to Dallas, it's to AT&T Stadium. Uh, I think that there's no way, there's no way they lose that game. Like, Dave Campbell will have them ready for that round two matchup if they get there. Yeah, I've never seen him that frustrated after after, yeah. after a game. Like, yeah. walking away from the podium, like, he was he was clearly pissing, rightfully so. Like, same with Jared, all those guys. I mean, you, you clearly, all the replay shows, Jared telling Decker, go up to the referee, let Brad Allen know what's going on. They let him know he still messed it up. It's so impressive so, how they're handling everything, too. Yeah, and I, I do like his, Dan's attitude. I'll tell you what, let's go to break. You want to hang for another second? Oh, we'll talk yeah. Michigan? Okay, of course. We'll, we'll talk Michigan when we get back. We'll, we'll break down that game in itself. You're tuning into the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Allow me to tell you, or Sam, play it.